Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous fall day here in the drought plagued and flood ravaged wasteland of South Austin, Texas. We have made it to Wednesday, November 13th, 2013, and I just finished my climate change meltdown roundup rant and I was going to uh, include this article in here but it's it deserves its own separate rant once again I want to uh, shout out my buddy EP from BC sending me this link I, I need to hire this man to go to work for me my fellow doomsday prophet but Anyway, this uh, story is about peak oil, and so I guess this rant is my latest rant about the reason why this doomsday prophet environmental alarmist and the chronicler of the downfall of, of oil-soaked global industrial civilization is on the fence about peak oil. Uh, I used to solidly believe in my, optimi my optimism that peak oil was going to save this planet. But uh, the more I understand and, and, and look at uh, what's going on on this planet, I, I've pretty much shelved that optimism that peak oil is going to come by uh, here and save this planet by destroying global industrial civilization. It, it, it peak oil is, is our last glimmer, I would say fading glimmer of hope to save this planet by bringing down global industrial civilization. And so I am cheering on peak oil. And this is our, this article here gives me this this keeps that that glimmer of hope this. I'm sure, completely naive glimmer of hope that peak oil has any chance of saving this planet. But anyway, this, uh, but it, it does keep me at least on the fence. And so I don't know how 100% uh, sure how it's going to play out. I would like to think that this, uh, that this article is dead on the money. I'm, uh, I am praying in my little ham bone heart that it is. And the reason I'm paying special attention to this is that this article is written, the name of this article is The Great Oil Swindle, and it is written by my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero. I've, I've mentioned several of his things, Nafiz Mozadek Ahmed, Nafiz, my hero, and he was writing this story for a French uh, a, a French publication called Le Monde, Le Monde Diplomatique, which I think means the diplomatic world, maybe? Anyway, the great oil swindle. What happens when the shale boom goes boom? The shale gas revolution was meant to bring lasting prosperity, but the result of the gas glut may be just a bubble producing no more than a temporary recovery that masks deep structural instability. And, you know, I'm talking about in the uh, fracking. Now, I'm going to put the, uh, I I'm going to, Put the uh, link to this excellent uh, long story in here. I'm just going to read you to whet your appetite. I'll read the first couple and probably the last paragraph. And I, if you read any article about peak oil, this is the one to read. Uh, if you're sick of hearing from Richard Heinberg and uh, James uh, Howard Kunstler. Anyway, <clears throat> getting on to Nafis. Recent headlines in the U.S. press about the coming economic boom heralded by the shale gas revolution would lead you to think that we are literally swimming in oil. A spate of reports last year in particularly the International Energy Agency's World Energy Outlook 
Uh, I, I, I've done several rants on that forecast that the U.S. will outstrip Saudi Arabia as the world's largest oil producer by 2017, becoming, as Reuters News put it, quote, all but self-sufficient in net terms, close quote, in energy production. According to the IEA, the, the Energy Agency, the projected increase in oil production from 84 million barrels per day in 2011 to 97 million barrels per day in 2035 will come entirely from natural gas liquids and unconventional sources, largely shale oil and gas, while conventional oil output will be begin to fall from 2013. Starting in this year, the easy to get fruit, you know, sticking a hole in a pool of oil and having it come squirting out the top, those days are gone. And, uh, but don't worry, fracking is here to the rescue. But continuing with uh, Nafis, these resources can only be mined at the cost of massive environmental pollution. Their extraction involves hydraulic fracturing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. He goes on to define fracking using the technique of horizontal drilling. But their exploitation in the U.S. has brought about the creation of hundreds of thousands of jobs and offers the advantage of cheap and abundant energy. Uh, ExxonMobil's 2013 energy outlook says the shale revolution will make the U.S. a net exporter by 2025. But is the shale revolution all it is fracked up to be? And that's what he spends this long in-depth uh, article tearing apart. The ongoing fragility of the global economy should give pause for thought. Uh, okay, then he ref goes over to a New York Times investigation first unearthed major cracks in the shale boom uh, back in June of 2011 finding that state geologists industry lawyers and market analysts privately questioned <coughs> quote whether companies are intentionally and even illegally overstating the productivity of their wells and the size of their reserves according to the New York Times quote the gas may not be as easy and cheap to extract, and I guess what's good for gas is proving to be true for oil too. Uh, back in 2011, the gas may not be as easy and cheap to extract from shale formations deep underground as the companies are saying, according to hundreds of industry emails and internal documents and an analysis of data from thousands of wells. Uh, I'm going to read one more, the last of the, the uh, introduction to this article and move on. All right, so then in 2012, two U.S. energy consultants writing in the flagship British Energy Journal Petroleum Review sounded the alarm. They noted a strong basis for reasonable doubt about the reliability and durability of U.S. 
shale gas reserves, which have been inflated under the new Security and Exchange Commission rules. The new rules allow gas companies to claim reserve sizes without any independent third party audit. And from there, he takes off and uh, to break down the dodgy economics of fracking. Goes on and on, uh, this, and then he, uh, from there, it, that it's all in the red as more and more he got more and more cases of oil companies, large and small, bailing out of the uh, this this great uh, shale revolution. Uh, I love this quote from my buddy Rex Tillerson, uh, CEO of of Exxon speaking to the Council of Foreign Relations, quote, we, meaning uh, oil companies, are all losing our shirts today. We are making no money. It is all in the red, close quote, talking about, uh, fra about uh, fracking. Uh, and the economic returns of fracking. That's uh, from that's Rex Tillerson speaking to my buddies at the uh, Council of Foreign Relations. Okay, and then it goes to the worst case scenario. Uh, I don't even know who this is. Somebody Berman quote. You may have a couple of big bankruptcies or takeovers and everybody pulls back. All the money evaporates. All the capital goes away. That is the worst case scenario." Close quote. In other words, the premise of peak oil is far from undermined by the shale boom. Uh, and in fact, uh, it has vindicated it. Uh, let me jump down to the very bottom article, and you can go on the link and, and read this entire. Uh, let's see, the final story, the final paragraph of this excellent story by my buddy Nafiz. <clears throat> Following a hugely successful industry PR offensive, Journalists and policymakers have largely ignored these studies about the economic realities of fracking. But the upshot is simple. Rather than ushering in a new wave of lasting prosperity, the eventual consequence of the gas glut is likely to be an unsustainable shale bubble, fueling a temporary recovery that masks deeper structural instabilities. When the bubble bursts under the weight of its own debt obligations, there will be a collapse in supply and a spike in prices with serious economic consequences. And uh, all I can say is I hope that my buddy Nafis and Richard Heinberg and uh, Jim Kunstler and all those guys are right that uh, all, all of this uh, rosy talk by these planet eaters is a bunch of unadulterated horseshit <coughs> and that peak oil is very much on track to bring down a global industrial civilization thereby saving the planet. Meanwhile, this doomsday prophet uh, who also is listening to my heroes uh, you know, the usual climate change guys, th th those usual suspects, uh, talking that 
no fear that we will burn up plenty more uh, fossil fuels to to kill this planet before we will ever hit peak oil and with the price of a gallon of gas being two dollars and seventy seven cents a gallon here in Austin Texas two dollars and seventy seven cents uh, all of this talk about uh, how expensive oil is getting yeah right uh, I am leaning towards uh, the the climate change doom, doomsday prophets but uh, but I hope Nafiz and his gang is right but go on the link read it see where you are on the fence yourself for this rant bye guys